Then you're right. I'll put the uncatalog down. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Hang on to your seats. Totally. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, know. I peaked a little bit ahead. It was a disaster. Sashi Buki Joshi Mento Tom Rira Ling Shi Nian De Gempari Sang Ye Shing Du Mik Te Uwargi Jogun <laughs> Gola Benchir Sangye Drupar Shok Sangye Chudam Soki Chonam La Jamchu Pardu Dagni Kyasuchi Dagi Chunyen Gipe Sonam Ki Gola Benchir Sangye Drupar Shok Sangye Chudam Soki Chonam La Jamchu Bardu Dagni Yasuchi Dagi Chunyen Gibe Sunanki Jola Benchir Sange Jupar Show. Uh, we're definitely going to need a, a scan of this text, okay? okay. Uh, is there one there? Yes. Because there's a lot of boo-boos here. All right, I'm going to cut the second line because it's a repeat of the first line, okay? They repeated the title on the second page. You okay? You got up with me? Totally. Do you want me to have the scan open? Scan. There's two versions. Yeah, please have the scan open. If you have a carving, it's better. It's the other one I think is better. Okay. We don't have a carving one. <laughs> but this has still been helpful that we have. Yeah, a mistake can yeah. be repeated. <laughs> Just no, no, you'll see, you'll see. Okay, here we go. Uh, so we're about to start our final of the eight subjects we've been doing, which is called Dupta. Okay, in Sanskrit it's Siddhanta, uh, which is Siddha plus Anta. Anta means the end. Okay, all A's in Sanskrit generally turn into E by the time they reach English. There was a time during Shakespeare when A's turned to E. So, um, Anta means end, like Yamantaka means death and dur. Ka means er, Anta means end, and Yama means lord of death. Yaman, yamantaka is death and dur. -er. <laughs> okay, so Anta means end. Uh, but in philosophy, it means like uh, the result of, or the, the end of, what you get after you try to prove things, drupta, siddha. Siddha means to reach, right? It's like, whose famous name? Siddhartha. Siddhartha means to reach this goal. <laughs> siddha artha is Siddhartha. Uh, okay, so anyway, this subject is called Siddhanta. And you can just call it, I like to call it comparative schools. So you take a subject like the Wheel of Life and you see what the great schools said differently about it, okay? That to me, it's very interesting. Rinpoche didn't teach us a lot of Siddhanta. Mm -hmm. And one day I asked him why, you know, why didn't you teach us one of the great Siddhantas? He said, I taught you the four schools. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> you can do it yourself, you know? He said, you don't need a book. You can write it in your head. But still, it's one of the sexiest kinds of literature, especially with respect to emptiness? how they teach emptiness. Yeah. How, you know, you can understand the pen better if you understand how teach it, how people teach it slightly wrong. Okay. So I'm going to cut. Uh, we already cut it. Okay. So here's the title. Please read. Dupta tam che ki nyingbo de fa she jao. Shuk so. Shuk so. Don't say shuk. Shuk means? Shuk den? Shuk den. Shuk, high tone? 
means power. Vega. Lotan, shoot. Herein resides. Okay? Okay. Uh, and as I, know, as I said, in a lot of areas of Tibet, you might hear people say Dumta. Okay? They pronounce the M. So here is the abbreviated essence of all the schools of philosophy. We, have to, we can't even say Buddhist schools, right? He's going to discuss non-Buddhist schools. Okay. In Betz's text, it says Shirnge. I'm not giving up on this. Shirnge. Oh, um, four. Yeah, the Duptas are only four. Yeah. But he's talking about Buddhist schools, mm -hmm. ancient Buddhist schools. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're definitely not Shirnge for Dupta genre of literature. Okay, okay, here we go. Uh, please read. Yeah, it's important with Gyurpa to, to not say G, say Lotom, because it's past tense and it's important. Gyur means to change or to change money. Gyur means became. Big difference. So he has a Jamba Shunur, Gyurpala, Chaksala. I bow down to. Um, it's uh, it's Manjushri, but it's the glorious youth. Yeah, become young. I call it become young. I bow down to Manjushri, become young. So there's a form of Manjushri which is a teenager. Okay. And uh, Kumara, Kumara Manjushri. Okay, the young one. Okay. Kumar is a famous, is a typical Indian name, the youth. Mm -hmm. And Rinpoche told us a joke that when he got to the refugee camp, they had an Indian teacher tried to teach them. And he got up in front of all these Tibetans and said, I'm Mr. Kumar, which in Tibetan means I'm the thief. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, of course, there was a pretty funny. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sauni Gatsor Tsumbe Mandare Lepar Suple. Something's wrong in the fourth line. That's where I need the I need the text. Something's wrong there. Can you help me out? Looking right now. What's the line start with? Uh, de, like de come. I'm sorry. Apostrophe D O D. The third line. Fourth line. Oh, fourth line. I, I think something's wrong with it. Yeah. I, it says here. Let me see it. Okay. It could be that I'm something wrong with me, which is always possible. Mm. Oh yeah, easy, easy. You tell me what's wrong. There's like four mistakes in one line. There's like four mistakes in that line. Okay. Okay, now watch. Uh, turn it around for me. Watch the fourth line, you guys. Okay, ready? Uh, two mistakes. Uh, three mistakes. Oh boy, that's gonna change things. Four mistakes. Oh my lord. Five mistakes. Uh, yeah, only five mistakes in one line. <laughs> uh, is that supposed to be R G U again, or is that supposed to be R G Y U? No, that's that's oh, it's D G U actually. Sorry, no, that's also misspelled. <laughs> that's misspelled. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a D G U on the second syllable? That's correct. So, five mistakes in this text, one mistake in the text we're using to correct it. Mm. In one line. That's translation. That's the world of translation. <laughs> now it makes sense, okay? All right? Before it was like somebody drunk. <laughs> I, like, I couldn't even figure out what they were trying to say. Okay, here we go. Uh, by the way, this question mark is not necessary. That's correct. Now, this refers to the Hindu creation myth, right. where, uh, I don't know who it is, uh, what's his name? Brahma. Brahma. Somebody, Brahma, Vishnu, they broke off Mount Everest, oh. and they turned it over, oh, yeah. and they went to the great ocean, and they stirred it oh, yeah. like a pizza dough. 
<laughs> and then uh, the, world, the world appeared, you know. So they took a mountain and they stirred the ocean. And then the, the world formed, you know, our, our continent formed, okay? So you have to know this creation myth. I looked it up. Apparently, they, I guess it's going to be important. They used it to get stuff out of the ocean, like Alerta. Oh, uh, yeah, they were trying to get deathless nectar. So 13 okay. things they got from the ocean by churning it with the big old mountain Madonna. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so now they're comparing the gas, the ocean, to the Tsokni. To the two collections. Collection of merit and collection of wisdom, right? First four, uh, first three perfections and the last two perfections and three and a half and two and a half. Okay, the two collections. Gyatso, uh, in, you, you dipped in the ocean the Tsumbe Mandara, okay? The Mandara of your effort. Mandara is the name for Mount Meru in the ancient, it's another, oh. it's like Mount Meru. It's also the name of a flower that grows on top of Mount Meru, so don't get confused. Mandarava is a flower, and sometimes it's not spelled with a D-H, it's spelled with a D-A. Is it a different, it, it is, it's different than um, Meru? I think it's different from Meru, okay. it's another mountain, Mount Mandara. Okay. And in Sanskrit dictionaries you'll see it without the H. Okay. But I think D-H is, a, is an acceptable Variant, okay. So you took the mandara of your own effort, and you stirred the ocean of the two collections, okay. Soup means to stir. It it literally means to to use a Vitamix. Hmm. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Literally. No, it's not just. Uh, it's not this. Okay. It's like vigorously stir. Okay. Soup. Uh, not just soup, but you lake by soup. Yeah. Very, very well. You super souped. <laughs> okay. And from that, okay, you got the, the jewels or, or the wealth of the two goals. Okay. You stirred the ocean with the mountain of your effort and, f and out popped the jewels of the two goals. Rangden and Shenden. What's Rangden? Your own needs, your own goals, and Shenden, the goals of others. Very famous in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Your own goals and the goals of others. And it's always important to say when you debate the opening lines of the Pramanavartika, mm -hmm. uh, Shenden doesn't mean the whole world got deathless when you got deathless. Rangden for you is you became deathless. Shenden means you have perfect capacity to help others. They may not be able to accept that help because of their own karma. So it has the, you know, there's a famous debate. You can spend a week on it. You know, has the Buddha achieved both goals? Yes. Have they achieved their own goals? Yes. Have they achieved other goals? Yes. So everybody's deathless, right? No. Mm -hmm. They've achieved perfect capacity to help others, but they haven't helped everybody. You see what I mean? Got it? So in Buddhism, to achieve the capacity, to achieve others' goals means the capacity to help others. Because you can't help them because of their karma. You see what I mean? You can't make them, you can't force them to become Buddha. But you have perfect capacity to do it. Okay. Okay. Jupe uh, Nor. Mundu Gyone. You made them come forth from the ocean depths, right? According to what you said, I like, I like it. You brought them into reality, or okay? You made them manifest. Sometimes Gundagir is good for oh, manifest. Yeah, okay. You manifested them. Drola uh, pende yi. Pende we had yesterday, but I know it was a long time ago. Oh, benefit and help, help, uh, and, help, and, help and happiness. Help, help and happiness. Help and happiness. And pende is a common monk's mm -hmm. name. It's a nice name to give somebody. Pende. No WeChat in the class. I'm trying to get a big clock, so we know the time. Okay. <laughs> uh, pende, I should say I just keep your phone if you use it. Okay. Do good. Now, the, wor the, letter, the word nine, do you know about this? Is sometimes used for a manyizer. 
And so is gya, and so is tong, okay. and so is boom. Okay. Huh. Okay. So, so oh. boom means lots of books, mm -hmm. okay. you know, and uh, ganden hagyama means lots of deities there. Okay. And du gu means the, all, the, all the variety of wishes that people could ever have. Uh, okay. So yeah, so du gu is a common expression that means the hopes and dreams of all the <laughs> all the world. Well, I'm mad in thee tonight. <laughs> this is an old Christian song. You know, everything everyone hopes for is, came from you. Okay, so Duga means the hopes and dreams of the whole world. Chok tzul, chok means highest ones. Tzul means you grant. You grant them. Okay, tzul means to grant. S-T-Z-O-L. Okay, you grant them. It can also mean to impart. Like when you see Tselwa, it means Lord Buddha bespoke. It's an ancient word. It's as ancient as bespoke. Okay. Uh, so do good. You said it's for uh, uh, ten, ten days, hopes and dreams. But then yeah, and you've got to connect them. The, the hopes and dreams of the whole world for help and happiness. Okay, okay something okay. like that. They, you have to read across the line. Okay. Uh, Dumba, that teacher, Kang de de, I bow down. Now, it's a typical Sanskrit uh, poetic device to start with ya, which means to that one, and you don't name them. Kangi lodu dumni tindel, very famous prayer to Manjushri. It starts out, who is it? That's cool. Who is it that comes from China? Who is it that looks like a phantom? Who is it? <laughs> Stanley! <laughs> you see, so you say, Khan, Khan, Khan. Okay, and it's supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be, uh, you say, Khan, Khan, Khan. Who, 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 who? So I bow down to who is that who helps everybody? Who is that that stirred the ocean? of the two collections with his mountain of effort to get out the, the two goals for all beings and make them manifest in the world. And, you know, who, who could that be? That, that, I bow down to that teacher who, okay? Yes. All right. Mm. Let's go to the fourth line of the second verse, because it's easy. You tell me. Uh, yeah. Literally, it says, you are Tsongkhapa, the omniscient one. You are the omniscient Tsongkhapa. By the way, again, alternate old spelling of Tsongkhapa with a B. It's not a mistake. Okay. Uh, now, sometimes you can say chak hello, okay? But if you want to be cute, you can say chak mm -hmm. You are the object of my chak mm -hmm. It's just another way to say chak hello, okay? He got tired of saying chak hello, chak hello, chak hello. He said chak you know? You're the one I want to bow down to, okay? So, you know, your challenge as a translator, as a creative translator, which I believe you are, not to say anything about anybody else. Uh, <laughs> can you twist the English to indicate he's just not saying I bow down to? Okay, so a lesser translator would say I bow down to blah, blah, blah. You know. But he, there's a little twist here. Can you show it in the English? Okay. I utanasana to. No. Anyway. Okay. It, it, Chaki Yul means you're the object of my prostration. Yeah. And is there some cute way? It doesn't have to follow this image. It has to be an alternate way to say bow down. Got it? Yeah. Something cool. Okay. And a lot of that depends on how much time you have to translate and stuff. Do you have time to make it sweet? Do you have time to try to get all these nuances or are you trying to get something done? Okay. Okay. It wouldn't be wrong to say I bow down to. Okay. But it would be less than cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jinye 
Time uh, Chutsu means uh, Dharma systems, mm -hmm. systems of Dharma, in the first line. However many they are, whether they are tongue or nge. Yeah, whether they are figurative or literal. Okay, all the teachings on the Dharma, as many as there may be, whether figurative or real or, or literal, okay? And if you take all those teachings, if you throw in all the ones that were, figurative means, you know how my teacher taught me figurative? My Chang'e teacher. And I translated for him for a couple of years, mm. teaching Chang'e. The, the tapes are all ev everywhere. <laughs> they're, they're awesome. It's they're awesome. Really hard, it's yeah. stuck on my iPhone. I hear it on my car when I'm first there's Jimi Hendrix <laughs> and then there's Chang'e. <laughs> uh, <laughs> somehow it's stuck in my thing. But um, it's a lot. It's just a lot. You know, if you take all the teachings that are literal. Oh, so my teacher used to say his student, he would be teaching me Chang'e. And I'd say, what's Chang'e mean? And his, his other student would be, I'm not his personal student, I don't live with him. But he was in another room, and the student, he asked the student to wash the dishes. And he was like, bam, bam, bam. And my teacher said, hey you! And he, and he said, I'll show you what tongue is. And I said, okay. And he said, hey you! I said, hey Tukten! Yeah. He says, come here. He says, he comes in the door and says, could you just break all those goddamn cups for me? <laughs> <laughs> That's figurative. It, it means be careful. Okay, got it? The word, the word is, please break all the cups. The meaning, the gongba, the gongba, right? The true intent is please, please be more careful. Okay, and that's a big subject in Buddhism. Big, big subject, you know. Because in the first and third turnings of the wheel, Lord Buddha, didn't say what he meant. Okay? Usually at the end people say, you know what I really meant was. But in Buddhism, he didn't. He said in the middle what he really meant. And in the third turning of the wheel, he went back, mind only. Okay, got it? Yeah, Tangwa means break the cup. Ngepa means please be careful. Tangwa and Ngepa means things he said that he meant and things he said that he didn't mean. <laughs> and if you add those together, you get a yangbe ka. Uh, this yangba means vast. Ka is namka. The, the sky. He's comparing all the Buddha's teachings. If you include the ones that are literal and the ones that are not literal, it's like a sky. I mean, you can get lost in it. It's as big as the world. It's bigger than the world. Okay, so in the vast, in, right, er, car. If you look up car in the dictionary, you'll see a uh, walking stick. <laughs> Be careful, karwa is a Buddhist monk's walking stick. So you have to know this is locative, <laughs> or you get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> I can predict it, yeah. The walking stick of the, uh, of the, of the figurative dharma. <laughs> So when you say to the sky, it becomes the same word as walking stick. Oh. So people can get confused. Okay, Yambekar. In that sky, you used your namchit. Your, your now, P-Y-O-D. Yeah, discernment. Mm -hmm. D-P-Y-O-D. S-P-Y-O-D means avatar. The activity. D-P-Y-O-D means examine. Somebody's text today was called Atacha. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Okay, this is the same word as the title of your book. Is uh, discrimination or anal analyze? Okay, so you used your your capacity for discrimination. Viveka, right, in Sanskrit, mm -hmm. like Vivekananda, uh, and uh, your your capacity to tear things up is like Utong Barwa. Uh, yeah, blazing means, barwa means blazing, okay? There's a famous book book called Toge Barwa, The Blaze of Reasoning. And uh, Utong means a thousand, 
a thousand rays of light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Again, that's just a, a many numerizer. It doesn't mean that it wasn't 999 and it wasn't 1001. So when you're translating numerizers, use one that's used in your own culture. A billion. You got a billion rays of light coming out of your head. Okay, got it? I'm not saying a billion, I'm saying you make up your own. But don't stick to a thousand. A thousand is pretty good. That's why I called it the thousand angels that have the blue. Because it's kind of a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, I would like to point out, Master Kramer, that there's a problem with the second line. Somebody's going to tell me, and I'm taking a coffee break, because you are going to be so slow about it. I'll give you a clue. Read the first two lines to yourself. Oh, Great. The, the, ver the meter is off. The beat is off. How many beats in the first line? Which is typical, listen. Ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. Ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. It's typical Tibetan. Uh, Milarepa reverses it. Ba ba da ba da ba da. Ba ba da ba da ba da. Okay. I did find a part of law in the skin. Nice! Ba da wa. Okay. And I'm guessing, okay, here we go, correcting this line. Was there a ball on the shuk or not? Were there two balls? Uh, oh, that's a wonderful question. Let's see. By the uh, way... I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm going to look at the scan again right now. By the way, it might be sha. It might be shuk. Can you tell me from the scan? By the way, you've got to have a scan of your text. Oh, you're totally right. There's no paw on the sh on the shoe. Yeah, they just glued it together. Totally. Mm. But is it sha or sha? Sha. Okay. Hmm. That's too bad. The shoe could have been better. <laughs> okay. What are we doing? Oh, come on. No, we just corrected the second line. We corrected the second line. We detected an error because the meter was off. We did. De we detected an error. Okay, Phil, watch. The second line looked like this before, but the meter wasn't complete. So we, we checked the scan and we saw two words got glued together. So a big part of translation is fixing the text. And I'm sorry. No, barwa shuk tamki. Barwa shuk tamki. Okay. So now it means uh, no talking. Now it means, shukta means just the slightest touch of what? The light of your discrimination, okay, of your intellect, okay. Uh, meaning like sunlight in the sky, okay, a touch of the light from your mind. Third line, causes the third line to happen. A touch of the light, just a touch, shuktam, of your blazing light will shepa. And yesterday I told you Jamyang Shepi Dorji's name was unusual because shepa means something very rare. Mm -hmm. And here you got it. Wow. Dee, 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 dee. This is so cool to go between yeah. chai and cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, come on, Shepa. To open a lotus. Okay? The sun hits a, flower, a lotus flower, it's Shepas. Okay? So, Jamia Shepi Dorji, one of the most famous writers that we'll ever have the pleasure to work with, his name means the, the diamond of the opening lotus. It's kind of sexy. Okay? Shade Zepa, it becomes active. It becomes, uh, what do you call that? Active as opposed to, pa no, mm. direct object, um. verb, <laughs> transitive verb. Who said that? Wow. You're scary, you're scary. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it always has an object, okay? So, to, so lotus shepa means the lotus flower opened, but shed zepa means you made it open.
Uh, you open the, the flower. Got it? Uh, it's not that the flower opened. You opened the, the flower. Shed uh, zippa. Okay. What? Just a little touch of the light from your extraordinary capacity to distinguish between the literal and the figurative. And again, it's this, it's this idea. Look. Ready? Okay, it's just, that's all it takes. Just a touch of your brilliance makes all the flowers open. Not, not a 10 minute thing, just, okay? One second, split second of your brilliance makes all these lotuses open. What's being compared to the lotuses? Uh, uh, Jetson Kappa's Viveka. Nope. Oh, to the lotuses, I'm sorry. Oh, the right? teachings um, literally. Of the Buddhas. Tup ten. Yes. Tup ten. Oh. Dap means petal. Tong means a thousand. The thousand petals of the Buddha's teachings gotta open when you put your mind to it. Your mind is like the sun, and they're closed. The meaning slows, but when you show up, all the meanings have to show themselves. Cause they don't have any choice. Okay, just a touch of your brilliance. And they're all like, okay, we give up. <laughs> Here, here's all the secrets. Here's all the meanings. Okay, got it? Very cool. Who has that power? Some Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a problem with the first line. I expect this. I suspect it's Nyang Pe. Can you tell me the oh. last syllable, the first line? Yeah. Or, or there's no S on, this, on the word before. Okay, P. Okay, we gotta fix that. Okay, got that? P A S instead of B A S. Last, last syllable okay. of the next line. P-A-S instead of P-A-S. Yeah. Gun de, now, the grammar text in Tibetan says, when you see the word de, go back, yeah. syllable by syllable, till you find out who's that. Uh -huh. De means him or her or that. So when you see de, which means that, or him or her, you got to slowly go back until you hit somebody who might be the him, or the her, or the that. Who is that? <laughs> yeah, good, Tsongkhapa, okay? That, that protector, okay? That protector. And I, I, I say don't be shy about current controversies. They will be over by the time your book comes out, hopefully. There's a protector controversy going on. I'm not going to not use the word protector in a book, you know, and I'm not going to waste my time explaining to people that it's not the protector that they're upset about. Okay, gun is a very fa common savior, if you want. Savior, protector, okay. And it's the first line of the verse. It looks like gun, but it's not, it's gun. Gun de lekshe means what? The well spoken protector. Yeah, the eloquent for philosophy or the eloquent writings. Find a different way. I mean, don't call it well-spoken words, you know. Find me some. Okay? Find me some cool way. I, I really want you guys to be sexy. You know, be sexy. Don't be dull. Okay? Like, spice it up a little bit. You know, take your translation and go, ha ha, this is my... You're, you're young. You should make it cool, okay? Don't get like you're a tired old man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gunde Lekshe. Duti? Nectar. Yeah, nectar. Duti. I think it's cool that the Sanskrit word is. Amrita. And not Amrita. Amrita. I R. Okay. Which means no death. Mm -hmm. And nectar. Mm -hmm. to, to, to cross death. Tar. Taras and Tara came into transportation. It means to cross. So neck means necrophilia means death. <laughs> Nectar means to cross death. Amrita and nectar are the same word. 
It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So nectar. Uh, so this doesn't mean nectar juice. It always means the nectar of deathlessness. <laughs> okay. And unfortunately, the first syllable is the word for demon. And why? I think it meant something powerful and magical in the old days. C oh. means any kind of gooey stuff. Okay. Like uh, honey is called... Jiangzi. 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 Yeah, okay. You okay? You have a question? Yeah, Oh, well, maybe that's it. I don't know. I've never seen an explanation of it. Yeah, right. It's the same spelling, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, do you see chu? What's chu? Um, also, uh, like, um, also, like a juice I don't know. I've uh, like Yeah, okay. Mm. Uh, there's two famous usages of the word chu. One is oh, in the in the contraposition of Ch and n. Oh. The world and its contents. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the Jiu vessel of the world is called n, yeah. and the people who live in that world are called ch, Jiu the Jiu contents Jiu of the vessel. Yeah. So you'll often see that in Buddhist literature. Okay. N, S N O D, Sanatana uh -huh. no na d, as compared to ch. Okay. But sometimes ch means the powerful magic. Uh -huh thing in the middle of a flower that if you're meditating a lot Chilling. you can live for many oh, months just Chilling. eating yeah and that's called taking the chu yeah. oh, that good. practice is called chu oh. this is not the spelling of chud meaning to cut uh -huh. someone's life or something like that okay, okay. so chu so here so here we go again you have some carte blanche here it's your book <laughs> i mean up to a certain point <laughs> so can you find two words uh -huh. that give this feeling of like the juice of the juice that keeps you from dying? Mm -hmm. Juice of the juice that keeps you from dying. Mm -hmm. Something like that, okay? The juice of juices. The juice of juices, yeah. <laughs> yang, yang is a form of nyong. Yang is a form of nyong. Taste. Yeah, nyong means to experience. Uh. Nyam nyong in Tibetan, modern Tibetan means an experience, okay? He's a very experienced person. You say nyong nyong chumbo. Yeah. He has a lot of nyong nyong. Uh, so nyong means came to mean experience, but in the ancient times it meant to taste, okay. to lick, and to taste. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, just to give you the punchline, he's talking about Gelsub J and Kedub J, mm. and he's using the past tense. That's why it was important for me to see if there's a P there. He's using the past tense. They nyang d mm -hmm. is what? They tasted the nectar. They, uh, they, they tasted the nectar of your lectures. Your great experience. Of your great writings. Oh protector, my protector, mm -hmm. my savior, Tsongkhapa. By the way, sometimes jam gun, right? Mm -hmm. Gentle protector Gentle mixed protection. with Manjushri. Mm -hmm. So again, there's this image that Tsongkhapa is mixing with Manjushri. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, they licked the honey of your books, man. <laughs> okay, and Ramjang Shungle Tada Tukchune, Tuksu Chupa, Tuksu Chupa, means to fit into your heart, but it means comprehend totally. They Tuksu Chupa, they understood everything. Tada means Malu Tamje. Yeah, each and every. Tada. Okay. It's a synonym for all, all, all. Shungluk. We had shung a couple times. I expect you guys to tell me what it is correctly today. Shung, lower, low, 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 low. Yeah, but by itself? By itself? Good. Yeah, major work. Major work. Opus magnum. Important work. Oh, I see. Shungluk is magnum opus? Uh, okay, I don't want to expect you to use Opus Magnum, but, no. <laughs> uh, but it means that. How many locus, uh, Opus Magnums? Opus Magnum is a Latin word that means great book. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, the one thing you do in your life, which is your most important thing you did in your life, it's going to be your book. <laughs> okay. So what is the Opus Magnum of uh, Nagarjuna? Wisdom. Wisdom, okay. Uh, okay. So anyway, how many, <laughs> he says here, Ram Jam. Ram Jam. 
Ramjam, there's only one good English word, and it's myriad. Countless. Myriad. Myriad. Oh, myriad. No, because there's other words for countless. Mm. And by the way, Ramjam is one of the 60 numbers. I don't remember which one. Oh. It's like quadrillion or something. <laughs> okay, but here, it, it's, it's almost always used to describe the, skies in the, the stars in the sky. They are Ramjam. Ramjam. And there was an old uh, degree in the monastery, it's called Rab Jamba, like master of a billion books. Okay. There was a Kachupa, master of the ten books. It got shorter and shorter. <laughs> First there's Rab Jamba, then there's Kachupa, and so now there's a Geshe who has only five books. <laughs> like we don't study Abhisamankara, I mean, sorry, Uttar Tantra, for example. We don't study Mainomi, really. Okay, that's why there's so few books about Mainomi. Uh, so tell me what the second line means and take your time. Okay. Um, uh, they um, completely understood Good. the myriad of essential works. Yeah, all of them. Okay. In their entirety. Like, oh. Tadak is like in their entirety, as opposed to all. Tadak. Which could, would give me three words for all. Oh, Tadak. Tamche, Malu. Yeah, Tamche, Malu, Tadak. Kun. We got four. Okay. They all have different flavor. This is almost in its entirety or in their entirety. Okay. Jishin Sawa Tunze. And then they taught them Selwa. And Jishin means correctly. Jishin means as they were. Okay. They taught them correctly, correctly, and clearly. So there's two things here, correctly and clearly. And they themselves became Lama Chok. Yeah, Supreme Lamas, because he's talking about the two. Okay. Tuo. Uh, Tuo is an ancient word for prince. Very ancient word for prince. Son and prince. Prince son, son of the king, is Tuo, okay? It's appropriate here because... These are the two sons. Yeah, he's talking about Gyaltsabje and Kedubje. A good place for a footnote. Okay. okay, the two princes of the king. Okay, Se means also prince. Seki Tuo means, you know, like... What do you call Throne... What do you call a crown prince? Mm. Meaning the ones who follow the king. The king dies, they become king. Crown prince. Okay. Sekito and Yikyang. They are also Du Jin Ne. Du means? Du. Not B. Apostrophe, please. Pre nasal. Yeah, I said Du. Okay. They are a place or a Yule. So he's using that same formula. But also you know. different again. Yeah, so good luck. Yeah. <laughs> they, are, they are a worthy place to bow yeah. down to. Mm -hmm. right. to focus on. Object, okay. I want to do one more line because I know you only have two minutes and you have to get a break. Tell me why the first line is something wrong with it. Good. How many beasts does it have? Oh, it has seven. Yes. Sun ne du Seven. How many are we supposed to have? Nine. It's not even close. <laughs> you can see visually that it's not even close. Okay. We need to go to the... By the way, <laughs> I'll tell you the first one. I, I, can tell, I can see the first one. It's at the end of the line. It's Dumala. Oh. <coughs> but what it says now is uh, the bed on which you lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The scan says Tsimpabul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it say? The scan says Tsimpabul. Tsimpatul. Actually, it doesn't well, say true. Mm. Let me see. Tsimpatul. Yeah. Uh, no, I, something wrong in the first two lines. Tsimpatul. Tsimpatul. Yeah, okay. P-H-U-L for the third. Wow. A possibly P-H-U-L? Uh, nope, just P-H-U-L. Uh, right now, possibly. It's B-R-T-S-O-N. P A P H U L G to S. Okay, let's do the first line just for 
just for fun. Mm -hmm. There's a thing in Buddhism about not stopping at the end. <laughs> you, you start the next thing, yeah, and then you stop. That's kind of cool. Sunba uh, <laughs> means what? Sundu? Uh, yeah. Effort. Great effort. Uh, uh, by the way, he's talking about his lamas. Okay, just to let you know. You have great effort. Pool in Sanskrit is Atisha. Oh. Perfected one? Yeah, perfect. Amazing. Mm -hmm. It's pul du chunga. Pul du chunga. Pul means pul du chunga. It means extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary effort. With extraordinary effort. Uh, to many, in many, Duma means many, right? Mm -hmm. It's Mongbo. Yeah. And Duma is the same thing. Rigne. Tell me what Rigne is and you get to go. Mm -hmm. Me too. What's a rigne? Um, it's a, well, it's like a family, no, it's a kind of, I don't know, rigne is. There are five great sciences and five lesser sciences. Uh. Okay, in Buddhism, there's a five great sciences and five lesser sciences. Okay, you want to know what they are? Oh. I'm going to use sync. Classifying? <laughs> Oh, it's Mala. Mala, it is Mala. I wrote an essay on them in 1975. About his tail? Yeah. Uh, I translated it uh, for some magazine. Uh, by the way, I'll teach you a trick if you want to get to the R's fast. I have, I have put the dictionary in folders. So skip file and go to the R's. Uh, See what I mean? I do. Is that sick? Very sexy. Uh, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> I've been waiting to have somebody to tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, uh, I just skipped to the R's. Okay. Uh, <coughs> here's the, the greater ones, okay? There are five greater sciences and the four lesser sciences. We, we have seven, you have seven minutes. Okay, can I take two minutes? Major sciences in Buddhism. Sorik. Medicine. No, that's oh, Sorik. Crafts. By the way, if you ever want to teach a student the difference between Sa and Sa, take them to the five sciences. Soa means uh, the plastic arts, fine arts, painting, architecture, where you make things. Sone. The next one is Soa. Medicine. Which is medicine, okay? So if you want to teach your students between low sa and high sa, go here, okay? Uh, soa is to create things like architecture, painting, art, music, okay? Sorik is medicine, okay? Darik, Sanskrit, study of linguistics, oh, yeah. Sanskrit, yeah. specifically Sanskrit. Tensi Rigpa. Logic. Oh, okay. And Nangdun means all the Buddhist subjects. Oh, so no, no, no. all the Buddhist subjects in the world are only one of the five great sciences. Okay? Okay, okay let's do the lesser ones and then you run. Uh, five lesser sciences. Nyangak. <coughs> poetry. Oh, yeah. Munja is uh, composition. Oh. Sorry. There's something else. Oh. Munja. Huh? Prosody, like poetry? What's the difference between that and the form before? Um, anyway, I don't remember. Debjor is, Deb is misspelled here, and it means that that's composition. Uh, Dukar means uh, dance and song, and Katsi is astrology. Okay. And that was because Jitna huh? means... Katsi is... But it's not... Hippie astrology. It's a <laughs> <laughs> I guess like this was because Jitna means... Place of knowledge. Oh. Yeah, be careful how you spell it. It's misspelled in the text. It's misspelled in the text. They put an S on it. They made it a place of, thing, of type. It's misspelled. It's misspelled. It should be Rikpenne. GP. Okay, this should go away. Look, this is a misspelling. Okay, it means place of knowledge. So, with extraordinary efforts, 
you, you mastered many of the classical sciences. Okay, bye. We gotta go, we gotta run. Okay. Thank you, Geshe-la. Thank you, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm see going home. Thank you. Safe tribe. Looks like it's not snowing. I got the key to the highway. Now I'll see if my thing works. Sorry. Thank you. I just show. Oh, I'm so happy. By the way,